so uh, yeah welcome dear participants uh, so i'm i'm just seeing many of uh, the participants are joining in so we'll wait for 2 minutes and uh, we'll start with the session Yeah, I'll, I'll just start. So we have participants uh, here. Still, more people are joining in. So uh, yeah, uh, welcome to all. Uh, welcome uh, to the today's uh, panel discussion, which is uh, basically on social marketing and uh, sales in enterprises. So this uh, this panel discussion is the second panel discussion as a part of uh, a webinar series we have uh, we have uh, doing. it on uh, to understand why social enterprises fail or succeed so as a part of the webinar series we like second panel discussion we have and uh, we have uh, very good uh, participants and the uh, panelists came to the table so uh, yeah uh, getting back to me like i am mr pogli and i am a manager in palavika international for the bbic so uh, here i look up the social enterprise uh, programs uh, that's like uh, we have multiple programs like innovation capacity building and uh, there is like research also we do a few so uh, it's more of like uh, our uh, social enterprise program is focused on uh, strengthening social enterprise ecosystem as well. so that's a major part and like uh, previous to my uh, job here i used to work with uh, telangana government companies government and non government and i also worked with uh, dr reddy foundation where uh, closely i have worked on uh, rural uh, i have designed the uh, prototype of uh, specially incubation center for rural women entrepreneurs so that's my experience and i i i, I completed my masters in uh, social entrepreneurship from uh, at institute of social sciences mumbai right? It's all about me and like uh, uh, here and so uh, going back to uh, just uh, let me actually uh, give give a brief about uh, what we are doing today. So today we will be uh, talking about uh, I I will be talking about a brief about my organization Balavikasa and then I'll introduce you all to our panelists uh, uh, a very brief and then our moderator. and then i'll, I'll uh, our moderator will take you to uh, why this uh, topic has been chosen like why this is important and then uh, we have a, a panelist who is uh, 
be focused on social marketing. Sanjeev Pandey will be giving a brief about social marketing and uh, why, what are the things. Uh, then we have sales in sales, sales versus social enterprise, or like sales in social enterprises. So we have Pramil Gupta and Shomi Guha, who who would be talking and like uh, putting few examples around sales and social enterprises in here. And then in between, we also have a few polls and feedback which we want to receive it from you, where like it would help us to go for uh, develop further and like more bring more efficiency to further sessions. So uh, followed by uh, after talking, our panelists are talking to brief about these uh, topics we have chosen, and then uh, followed by mod our word moderator will uh, ask you very uh, critical uh, criticality or like few uh, basic questions which are involved with uh, social enterprise uh, success and failure and like involving social marketing and sales. Followed by we'll take your questions, participant questions, and then. Can close the session. That's all the flow for so the today. Okay. As I said, like I'll, I'll just give you a brief about uh, my organization. So uh, my organization is Balvikasa and Balvikasa Social Service Society, and uh, it's a forty-three-year-old organization. So uh, you you can see already in the PPT we have uh, three verticals there, three major verticals, and uh, it, it all started in nineteen seventy-seven. Uh, our founders are like. Uh, Balimkasa has been founded by Bala Teresa and uh, Andrew Gingras. They have been like, uh, are, like they had a philosophy of uh, helping community help themselves. The, the, that simple philosophy has led this Balimkasa to get into programs and like 43 years of that. That's all. And like uh, when, when I, I, I simply want to give you a brief about CTDP and like what are these three major verticals what we are looking at. CDDP is nothing but community driven development program. So it all started with there and like uh, within the CDDP, they have, we have started 1977. And within the CDDP, we have uh, very uh, diverse programs like water conservation, clean water uh, delivery, clean water supply. We have like uh, more than 15, uh, 1500 water plants across uh, South India. I'm like majorly focused in Telangana, other Telugu states, and like we are into. Uh, four other uh, states also combinedly we have uh, six to seven states covered in, within CDDP program. We have organic farming. We have an initiative on organic farming. And you must be knowing about model communities, like model villages. Every day, every state do have a model villages. So we work with them. And then we also support a lot of orphans. And we have uh, specially and uh, flagship programs around widows and uh, women empowerment programs. So, very diverse programs are does and like uh, the, the basic philosophy is all simple. So help the community, help themselves. So that's all. So uh, with that experiences, we have discovered one more article, which is PDDC, which is like program uh, people development training center. So we have recognized and like uh, organization has recognized that there is a need of a lot of training for uh, all the development professionals who are involved. So this has been, PDDC has been uh, established in 2002. And uh, we have uh, given more than 300, uh, more than 300 uh, training programs, international, national, and like multiple diverse standard and uh, customized training programs for various stakeholders. So that is all. and. Uh, our uh, CDDP and PDDC are uh, majorly, uh, our operational headquarters is in, is in from Varangal. Varangal is a, a city in Telangana state. And uh, coming back to BBIC, BBIC means Palvikasa International Center, where we only focus on two things. Uh, one is social entrepreneurship, one is responsibility. So with all these experiences, two vertical experiences, we have realized that like, it is not just only about community development, sympathy, grants, funds, grants only. So we have to get into responsible business space. And the organization has realized, realized that like there is an initiative required, which, which involves corporates and uh, community. So we are here trying BBIC is a trial to establish uh, and uh, get more engagement with corporates to get into community development and that. So, uh, and the responsible business majorly focuses on CSR, uh, majorly works with corporate uh, professionals and impact assessments, uh, 
social factors as SRY, that kind. So when I talk about social entrepreneurship, which is my program here, and like we have multiple, as I said, incubation services, then capacity building, capacity building for different different stakeholders, and we 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 want to cover these stakeholders from uh, a early stage of their life to the elder stage. That is what we are uh, trying to uh, trying to bring as much diversity as possible. So we are also slowly into research uh, where we want to uh, provide more inputs. To Strengthen this SE ecosystem. Like a lot of people do not have an understanding for why exactly these uh, uh, social enterprises are failing, and like why only certain sectors are much focused for social enterprise. Why there is no separate legality for. So we want to uh, through this all initiatives we want to bring up um, peer pressure group or like pressure to policymakers where we have some uh, policy around social. So that's all about like my organization and uh, let me uh, like you can see that that's the campus we have. We we have a campus which is the biggest uh, facility for social enterprise incubation across India. And uh, this campus can accommodate uh, 600 people at a, at a time. So let me introduce quickly uh, with our panelists. Uh, so we have uh, Mr. Shaomi Kuha who is uh, a, a great business leader and uh, he he currently he is into social impact sector and uh, he formerly have a uh, two decades more than two decades of experience with uh, different different corporates and formerly he has been with IP Global and Wish Foundation and uh, he comes with a uh, uh, like he comes with an expertise of concept selling and strategic alliances and upselling so those are the uh, expertise he brings to the table today and uh, he's uh, uh, and we are we are lucky to have him thank you sir. And uh, next we, we we have Pramil Kumar Gupta, uh, who, who who himself is a social entrepreneur. Currently, is a director uh, for Regenerative Agriculture Green Foundation. And uh, we wanted this diversity of uh, uh, panelists. Like uh, uh, you can always see, like uh, there is a corporate-centered uh, person, there is a community-centered person, there is an academic uh, person on board. And uh, uh, where uh, uh, Pramil sir actually brings uh, uh, community perspective, uh, community practices, and like uh, especially what how the sales exactly happen in the community level, from grassroots level, uh, how the product pricing has to be de dealt with, or like pricing, what how this entire pricing makes a difference. And uh, he he has worked with uh, with the livelihood impact partners. Samavesh, Indian Forest, Farm Forestry Development Cooperative. So he, he comes with again uh, more than two decades of experience. And uh, finally, we have uh, Professor Samir Deshpande, who is who, who taught me social marketing during my master's. And then uh, currently, he's a associate professor and managing director of social marketing at Griffith University, Astri. So uh, just, just to give you a hint on uh, Grif uh, about Griffith University, Griffith University is like world's largest uh, university based uh, social marketing center and works with uh, uh, and works or like partners you know, partnering with uh, social change practitioners thinkers and scientists and uh, basically that their philosophy is like a uh, 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 philosophy or ensure that uh, people uh, that people and our planet come first like not the other perspective like not just uh, the, the profit so uh, we are lucky to have him and like he is uh, he is like uh, the editor uh, editor in chief for social marketing quarterly that so uh, I I want to see I, I want to say one more uh, about, uh, one more thing about Samit Deshpande sir is during uh, our masters I I, I know him uh, this is the first book social marketing in India not that it would be that was the first book we know about social marketing and like he, he luckily we that that was the time we. We saw that book and like he released that he published that book, and um, yeah, he he has done his PhD from uh, PhD in social marketing from Wisconsin University. Yeah, so yeah, these are all these three are our panelists, and uh, I would also like to introduce moderator here today. So our moderator is uh, my director Rahul Bharadwaj, and um, Rahul Bharadwaj is like very accomplished uh, strategy and management consultant with a very diverse uh, different, different pro pro projects. Like uh, he, he handled multi-million uh, projects and assignments. 
uh, the, the best part is like he handled uh, uh, these these come with business uh, diverse business sectors at the same time uh, diverse areas i mean like really uh, region wise they are they are scattered across like uh, projects from uk india middle east and southeast asia that, that that's the diversity he brings to the table and uh, uh, yeah of course he is a alumni of hansraj college delhi university uh, and then london business school london so and also he is a member of uh, csr panel uh, for uh, confederation of uh, indian industries yeah, yeah telangana chapter so that's all i i have introduced all and uh, i also have uh, manila and parvati as my team who are associates for all this possible so uh, now i hand, hand over it to rahul thank you thank you sir thank you rahul be here and thanks for all the participants to be here so yeah rahul uh, thanks uh, thanks vijender uh welcome uh, pramil shamik and samir parvati manila and all other uh, participants good to see uh, you know quite a decent number that we have we will not disappoint you we'll do a wonderful discussion we'll uh, touch a very relevant topic which is social marketing and sales now uh, guys we have to understand that social marketing is not social media marketing these two are very different social marketing is something which is intended or which intends to do or which intends to change people's behavior it is done to bring about a social change and so is the objective of social entrepreneurs and therefore we find that there is a strong link between social entrepreneurship and social marketing and sales and therefore we have picked up uh, this topic that how important or how critical is social marketing to survival or uh, success of social entrepreneurs so today's discussion we will see different aspects of social marketing professor samir based on his extensive research and experience will talk about how do we define social marketing what are the aspects of social marketing what should be kept in mind while uh, uh, conceptualizing the social marketing for your own uh, venture and then uh, pramil and shomik will take to the live examples on how on ground these social marketing uh, techniques and tools are used to facilitate sales or revenue a very important component for uh, social entrepreneurs mind you when we talk about revenue uh, you have to understand that uh, when uh, when we define uh, social entrepreneurship we are putting social word before entrepreneurship word so there is a meaning to it so what we are saying is that yes there has to be a revenue generation there has to be a profit uh, uh, motive but social is the first word that is used in overall concept so therefore uh, what we'll today see is a uh, is is uh, you know some kind of uh, uh, clarity on social marketing how we can use social marketing why is it applicable uh, for social entrepreneurs whether it competes or it can uh, coexist with the traditional forms or modern uh, marketing uh, methodologies so all of this will uh, will will uh, uh, go through the format will be uh, the uh, the experts and the panelists here they will talk about uh, certain topic to set up uh, the tone and context of the discussion and then we will take up questions and answers we already have uh, some questions which we think are quite relevant we will uh, discuss those questions and then should time permit we will also open up uh, the question answer session from the participants in a moderated manner it will all depend on the time and it will all depend on uh, uh, the the uh, availability uh, of time at the panelists and i would request you all should there be any questions please use uh, the zoom platform options like raise a hand or chat box to uh, to uh, ask questions and then we'll pick it up i think that way the discussion will be uh, uh, streamlined and focused so without taking much of your time uh, i think we will just uh, quickly jump into uh, uh, the content 
and uh, let us hear from our uh, panelist uh, we'll we'll start with the uh, uh, samir on uh, defining the broad uh, and uh, you know specifics of social marketing and then we'll take it from there yeah yeah samir thank you very much rahul and vijender uh, parvati and manila for inviting me uh, can we see the slides um, as a professor i guess i'm handicapped <laughs> by the teaching aid um what i would like to present is the role of social marketing within the bigger social entrepreneurship model um and that's uh, been will be the focus of my 10 minutes uh, of presentation and i will try to address some of the questions that rahul and vijay that have posed to me um i would like to thank chris perdi professor subhash isre and chinmay mandopadhyay for uh, helping me uh, un understand the world of social enterprise because i come from the world of social marketing um so for me it was that conceptual link and gap that i had to uh, fill before i could be claim myself to be an expert um can we go to the next slide uh, i will skip this one because vijender has already eloquently described our center um i will also uh, very quickly uh, skip uh, this point i think vijender also mentioned how i am an editor of smq and have written this book on social marketing in india um so the main point i wanted to make was social entrepreneurship is growing not just in india but all over the world we are seeing pro proliferation of charities uh, more charities are chasing fewer static amount of funds of the government and the foundations uh, so that's the supply side from the money which is forcing many charities to actually think back on what how we need to carry out our uh, our agenda how do we achieve our mission uh, the jeffrey sachs model the old uh, who is a professor in of economics in harvard uh, i find jeffrey is still somewhat stuck in that old ways of do donor dependency i think the world is moving on to self sufficiency and i will highlight dkt international's example to show how a non profit actually has taken that by its horns and taking it uh, to that uh, self sufficiency model so that's the donor donor side there's a issue also issue of the consumers consumers are increasingly expecting good quality service it does not matter who you are there is no excuse anymore left that because i'm a charity uh, you know you will accept my low quality products and services i think those days are gone consumers are demanding that i want to see good quality service and products no matter where it comes from uh, and that could be because the incomes are rising their demands are rising and they want that um that requirement next slide please um and so what has also happened is government is also uh, siphoning off uh, not siphoning off is actually trying to give away many of its responsibilities to the private sector which has led to this ppp model um and and that is also a way to um be, have a push towards uh, doing more on self sufficiency and social entrepreneurship model so the future lies in the area of social entrepreneurship for the non profits and as well as for the corporate sector who are increasingly realizing their importance of being a part of socially responsible player in the market they cannot any more be um cozy and lazy about being the source of the problem they also have to be the a partner in providing solutions um and because of this whole model turning towards privatization the influence or the emphasis on impact and outcomes has gone up um so within that whole uh, model of more business orientation the importance of social marketing has gone up um so non profits are realizing um that they need social marketing more uh, aggressively if they have to achieve their mission while being self sufficient so can you go to the next slide i will quickly touch upon a, a model that has been put together by these australian partners wayside chapel and university of technology at sydney they have shown a spectrum of a traditional charity on one hand and complete business oriented organization on the other hand i think social entrepreneurs are somewhere in between they are the hybrid form where they are achieving impact while not while doing it by themselves and that is fundamentally changing the organizational culture um of of the employees and the management it's is a hard task especially at the start but it is something that has become a necessary one so can we go to the next slide please 
So I will touch upon DKT International. So next slide, please. DKT is the largest private player of family planning products and services in the world. Um, and they also do HIV AIDS prevention uh, uh, um, services and products. Uh, in 2020, DKT reached 49 million couples in 90 countries. DKT has two branches in India. One is based in Mumbai and the other one is called Janani, which is out of Bihar in Patna. Um, if you look at their key financials over last almost 20 years, you can see that their revenue has gone up. The red line is the revenue. Um, actually, can we, can we see the legend here? Just to be sure that the uh, participants can see the legend. No, you, you cannot. Okay, uh, that's okay. It's okay. Um, so the, the red line is the revenue. The green line is, um, and I, I wish I could see the legend, but I think the green line is the cost. Um, but the blue line is where um, I think the profit is coming in for. Okay, so that you can see the steady growth of profit and revenue, but uh, while the cost has remained steady for them. All right, next, let's go to the next slide. The next slide is very important. Uh, what they have done is DKT realized at, at least 10 years ago that they need to become less donor dependent. Uh, so the USAID, the UK aid, the KFW, which is a German one, they were handsomely funding their, pro, uh, their work. In India, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare does the same. Um, if you look at these countries that they operate, you can see that the countries in South America and East Asia, so like Brazil, Mexico, or Vietnam, even Turkey, you can see that they are completely generating the revenue by themselves. Okay. Now, of course, in some African countries, they're still donor dependent. Um, so like in Ethiopia, only 41% revenue comes from their own sales. In India, if you look at the Mumbai office, it is 72% and the Janani office is 54%. So the remaining, the gap is filled by the donors. So at least the African, uh, sorry, the South American and the East Asian countries and, and Turkey have stopped depending on the donors. Yeah, um, can we go to the next slide? Uh, where are they really get, putting their money? So they are recovering their money from commodity costs, from operating costs and the marketing cost. Where they need donor dependency completely even today is when they do startup initiatives or special activities, right? So it gives you an idea of uh, how they have ensured that they become independent of donors in certain areas while they still have to wait for, uh, depend on some others. What has happened, and I've spoken to the, C, the president and the CEO of DKT extensively on this, Chris Purdy, he said that he has fundamentally changed the way we operate our organization. Countries like Turkey and Vietnam, actually, uh, Brazil or Mexico, they actually behave like business organizations, but with a social conscience that they have to ensure HIV goes down and family planning goes up. Um, and that fundamental change has really made a difference it's, and it's contagious because even the African countries have started to think about it. Uh, even though they still cannot recover the cost because of the poverty and demand. Uh, and yet it is, it is disrupting the culture even in African and countries like India. Can we go to the next slide? So what has happened is as the culture changed, they realized the importance of marketing. And so social marketing has become even more important for DKT in the recent years. Uh, keep in mind that social marketing actually is quite prominent in most HIV AIDS and family planning campaigns all over the world has been from 1968 when the first campaign was launched in India. Uh, but what has changed today is social marketing has become more accountable, more outcomes and impact oriented. And that's what social entrepreneurship has brought to the table. Um, so I wanted to very quickly highlight that social marketing is a extensive 10 step framework as proposed by Philip Kotler and his colleague Nancy Lee. Uh, Whoever claims that social marketing is all about making posters and brochures, or as Rahul mentioned, about Facebook and LinkedIn, is completely misguided about his or her understanding of social marketing. To understand social marketing, you have to think like a commercial marketer for social conscience. So can we sell brotherhood like we sell soap or coke? Was one of the first articles written in social marketing literature. Um, so what is social marketing then? Can we go to the next slide? So social marketing is about understanding the audience really critically, almost using a co-creation approach 
making them partners so that you know where they come from, you know their world, you empathize with them, which, realize, which makes you realize you need to do extensive research. Um, marketing is about providing attractive exchanges for everything that consumers give up, they have to get more in return. So you have to reduce uh, barriers and you have to enhance benefits to the desired behavior. So that's an, it's the fundamental theoretical foundation of marketing, which is exchange. Where do I give and in return, what do I get? And do I get this ret in return? Is that superior to competition? And that's the fundamental uh, thought of marketing, which we bring even to social marketing. So what, we, what are we really doing? We're trying to make the desired behavior fun, easy, and popular. Three important words. If we can frame our campaign as fun, easy, and popular as perceived by the audience, you know we have a winning proposition. And so what are we really doing? We are offering them a tangible form of desired behavior. And that's the uniqueness of social marketing. Safe sex, condoms, or pills. A hand hygiene, uh, soap. Uh, or uh, the alcohol-free hand rub. Um, think tangibilization of desired behavior, which is what influences the environment in which we live. If there's no point talking about healthy food or obesity reduction unless we actually provide the healthy food to the consumers. And yes, fear appeal is used very often in health communication and social communication, but by itself, it does not work. It has to be combined with benefits. Next slide, please. So as Rahul mentioned, what social marketing is not, it is not just communication. Communication is a part of social marketing, but it goes much beyond that. It's not social media marketing. Although if you search Google right now, I mean, type in social marketing, the first 10,000 hits are on social media marketing. They have hijacked our world and we, and we cannot do anything about that. Uh, it's not about nudging too. So that word of behavior and the world of behavioral economics has caught up. Um, and they have somehow taken over the agenda of behavior change. Behavioral economics is important, but at some later time, I'm happy to talk about how it has its own limitations. Uh, and it is not about regulations and coercion. It's about voluntary behavior change. Next slide, please. So I was asked to talk about how does that differ from commercial marketing? Well, the primary aim of commercial marketer is shareholder value. For social marketers, the primary aim is how do I provide value to the society? So the, it's a much bigger macro version of benefit. What is the nature of competition? Commercial marketers are still focusing in the same category of brands, Coke, Pepsi, Came, Dove. In social marketing, the competition is the current behavior, right? So for, con for safe sex, it is unsafe sex. For condoms, it is not using any contraceptives or safety net. That makes social marketing a much more difficult proposition because you're actually making people switch from one behavior to another behavior. One behavior that is very attractive, it's fun, it is your habit, you're used to it, it is traditions. You're breaking all that stuff and take going on to a place where a new disruptive behavior is introduced. And that of course creates resistance uh, because the self-interest is not addressed. Uh, when you tell me to wear condoms, I'm perceiving that my pleasure for sex goes down. That self-interest has gone down. And why is that interesting? Because my payback time is not immediate. It's not guaranteed. It's sometime in the future and it's not, uh, there is no guarantee I will get it. So if I exercise every day for next 20 years, there's a 40% chance I will not die of heart attack after 40 years. There is no probability. The probability is so weak that it makes it very unattractive. So commercial marketers actually do a good job of capturing that benefit and that attractiveness very easily. So Durex India has this poster that I saw on Twitter, uh, not to uh, be too uh, cynical about the government campaigns and also the comparison is problematic because I'm showing you on the right side Deluxe Nirod campaign which is a few years old but I do want to make a point that government campaigns social marketing campaigns as done traditionally are very avoidance based we are always saying don't do this don't do that while commercial marketers are telling you no do it because it helps you it's beneficial it's fun it's attractive we need to change our mindset from avoidance based of not doing it uh, of benefit being probabilistic to something that is immediate, guaranteed, and attractive. Next slide, please. Um, 
I was uh, told to uh, comment on how social marketing differs from social norms. So social norms is a appeal, a communication appeal among many, sub, many sets of communication appeals available to social marketers. There's rational appeal, there's emotional appeal, there's vanity. Um, so those are various op options available to marketers. Social norms is one of them. And as I've told you, communication is only one of the many strategies available to social marketers. So for example, when you see a movie like Dangal or you see a movie like uh, Padman, these are just creating the norm that it's okay to empower women to your daughters. It's okay for a man to talk about sanitary pads. Well, that is a communication aspect. If you really want to make a difference to the world and why is social marketing important? Because we know from research, from systematic reviews, the more you use social marketing benchmarks, the more likely the behavior changes. So rather than just talking about Padman, which was important by the way, that's not enough. You have to actually ensure that the sanitary pads are available to the market at an attractive location price and with several benefits. And so Dangal is a good movie, I love it, but you also need to actually provide a place where women can go and learn wrestling and make that attractive. So 35,000 rupees might be expensive, but you can discount that and you can make that place attractive to empower women as a, as a bridge, as a medium to empower women. Next slide, please. I was also asked to, uh, to comment on how do you measure effectiveness in social marketing? If you look at those five parameters that I have measured there, which is the normal evaluation model, input, output, outcomes, impact, and social return on investment, I want to say that social marketers should and can deliver outcomes. We cannot deliver impact because impact takes much more than just behavior change to carry out outcomes. HIV AIDS is an, a reduction is an impact. HIV AIDS does not go down just by using condoms. There are many other factors in addition to behavioral change, in addition to condom use that, that contribute to reducing HIV AIDS. So social marketing is about delivering outcomes, delivering behavior change. And that becomes one of the denominators when you are calculating SROI. So it's important to keep in mind what to expect from social marketers. Do not expect impact, expect outcome. And also impact also takes much more time. Outcomes are much more, are slightly more short term to intermediate term. Thank you, next slide. Uh, sorry, I was given only 10 minutes. So I had to really run through my slides and through many concepts. I hope I have tried to touch upon them. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, during panel discussion. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Amin. I think fantastic. I think a good, uh, uh, good insight into, uh, you know, what actually social marketing is and what it is not. And then how do you uh, compare and contrast uh, social marketing uh, objectives and outcomes as against uh, the traditional marketing uh, outcomes and how something which is really beneficial in long term and uh, will not probably give an instant gratification is really difficult and i think that's the uh, that's the core of uh, core difference between social and uh, you know the normal or regular marketing so uh, good i think on that note uh, I, uh, you know uh, i'll go to the i'll go to uh, shamik or Premier. anyone can take this how do we now take it forward so we have talked about uh, uh, social uh, marketing. How do we relate it to the sales? So the sales uh, in social entrepreneur, uh, in social enterprises. So how are sales uh, getting impacted with social marketing or how do sales get linked with social marketing? What kind of impact uh, and what kind of uh, tools uh, of social marketing uh, can, can uh, lead to good sales? So I think uh, uh, Shamik uh, would want to go uh, first and then I will come to Pramil. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks Rahul and thank you uh, Vijender. Thanks Amir, that was a wonderful presentation. And thank you for having me as part of this esteemed panel, I guess. Um, I don't have a presentation like uh, Samir just, uh, you know, very eloquently put across his points. Uh, 
my response is more uh, based on real world scenarios on my personal experiences or what i've seen in the industry so i mean um, and 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 as as vijinder said that i i come from an industrial or a corporate background or a sort of a social uh, social impact space which i've been part of primarily in the healthcare space for the last 5 years i think the sales aspect and and this is what i've seen with uh, because i've worked very closely with tech based solutions in the healthcare space it you know it's a very organic process that's one thing and uh, what you need to sort of keep bear in mind is what's your sort of customer set i mean who are you sort of targeting what's their ability to pay what's the current landscape i mean is there a competing product is there a competing solution or is your particular product or solution completely blue ocean completely new revolutionary which is you know basically disrupting the space entirely so um how do sales get linked i guess what what one has to do is study what is the current scenario where is it uh which the market exists from an access from an affordability perspective um and based on what is the current scenario you essentially price your product you then uh see as to what's the best uh route to scale up so i mean uh And, and and since i i have some experience in healthcare uh, i'd like to mention that you know oddly enough or funnily enough most of the healthcare in our country gets delivered in the private healthcare space right uh, because the public healthcare infrastructure is uh, sort of inadequate or woefully short right so as as citizens or as users or or from to access healthcare any kind of healthcare forget quality etc uh, we as citizens have to look at the private healthcare space now having said that that increases our sort of uh, you know out of pocket expenses and the cost burden therefore if your solution is able to or if your product if your service is able to address uh, that aspect of access and affordability i think then you need to look at whether you need to target the public health care space or is your model or is your solution sustainable on its own by addressing the private health care market right um we all know you know sort of public health care has the potential of huge volumes however uh, uh, you know private health care uh, the attractiveness is uh, from a pricing perspective uh, from a strategic perspective i think it your your the endeavor should have a mix a, a heady mix or a good mix of both the public as well as uh, you know sort of the private healthcare uh, private providers mix and that's because essentially healthcare is a social good it's it's i mean you you you're in the you're in that space to create better access and affordability to the common person or to the common public or common citizens therefore um one needs to see what your solution is whether there is a addressable market for the public healthcare system to absorb unfortunately the public healthcare i mean the ability or the the process of absorption in the public healthcare uh, space is very long and tedious however there are and in the last i think uh, well about 18 months or so we've seen telemedicine being a disruptor and as consumers we have accepted uh telemedicine being a very viable opportunity or solution for addressing this huge aspect of healthcare inadequacy or healthcare inequity right healthcare uh, and just to share with you all telemedicine has been at least around in india for the last 15 years of course there has been factors such as you know broadband connectivity mobile data etc connectivity etc however the the degree with which acceptability has been uh, received in the last 15 months is unprecedented so uh, and and fortunately enough uh, even the uh, sort of the present government talks about public private participation which samir mentioned uh, as part of the national health policy therefore 
um, I would say link your sales with what your solution is, uh, what your product is. Uh, it has to be a you know sort of a optimal mix between the public and the private, uh, because private will get you that you know initial off the ground uh, inertia. It will it will get you up and running. But if you really want to create social impact at scale, uh, the public healthcare or public infrastructure or public good as such uh, should be the attempt uh, to actually scale. So, I mean, I'll stop over here. Uh, I think Pramil has some points. Uh, please go ahead, Pramil. Thanks, 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 Shamik. Yeah, I think uh, uh, just like you, Pramil has also been associated uh, with, uh, uh, you know, the sales and the on-ground uh, insights. Uh, I think he'll also have uh, some insights to share on uh, sales, maybe some examples also. Yeah, Pramil. Right. So, yeah, I changed my uh, some of slides. So, uh, can I share my, uh, my screen? So, I think, Vijendra, you need to give... Yeah, uh, yeah. Pramil, sir, you can share directly. Yes, yes. So, uh, thanks uh, uh, very much for uh, inviting me this such very experienced uh, panelist and uh, the, the whole uh, linking this to... Uh, global and uh, community level uh, discussion around the social marketing and sales. So friends, I, uh, my background is uh, from, I worked many years uh, with the small and marginal farmers. So I, I will discuss uh, my experiences from the small and marginal farmer, which if you see that because we are discussing on social and social largely you see the our rural population uh, around uh, 850 million rural uh, people, where uh, 136 million people come from the small and marginal uh, 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 farming community. And uh, the largely, uh, the, uh, around 86% again, uh, are the small and marginal farmers. And those are struggling a lot in terms of uh, the annual income from the agriculture and allied sources. And uh, my, my focus, uh, I would like to say here, uh, with the community-led social enterprises and how these enterprises actually struggle in terms of sale, how they, with a better strategy and better research work, they are uh, running successfully in currently. Uh, 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 these examples are from the two states, largely from Madhya, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. First example is you can see the from my screen is uh, when around 10 years back, I was in one village and I was discussing on the key problem. Why not? Pramil, sir. Farmers. Sorry. Can you actually zoom in the PPT? We have requested. Oh, yes. Yes. So, uh, so the main uh, for small marginal farmers, main challenge was they were not getting the right quality of seed on time because the whoever company those were selling uh, the branded company the seed in market was very high cost and the government system was very difficult to reach to marginal farmer because whatever the seed was coming so the comparatively larger farmers were taking early and even the government schemes which we were the promoted uh, to provide subsidized uh, quality seed to farmers they were not able to avail because the schemes was uh, in government uh, from the government is first come first serve basis and with some token money basis. So it was very difficult. So we we discussed with some some uh, some farmers. We can be start our own uh, company, own cooperative, and uh, start seed production. So uh, the twenty five farmers, uh, all small farmers, came forward and they registered a uh, farmers. Uh, 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 a FPO seed uh, a producer company, and uh, 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 I would like to say uh, here you yesterday only I prepared this presentation while uh, interviewing uh, chairman of the seed cooperative, and I was very happy. So he mentioned that uh, the all income uh, annual average profit of the all twenty farmers after deduction of all the expenses is increase up to the 20,000 rupees. 
So, and I, I was asking how you're sailing, what kind of challenge you are facing. So he told is uh, when you promoted, when you came in village and this all concept uh, came, that time, uh, initial three years, we struggled to build a brand, a build a credibility among the fellow farmers on seed production side, because the largely farmers were not believed in the seed production thing is possible in within the village from the foundation seed. So this, this, uh, this, this people our, uh, this was demonstrated and uh, they build a kind of trust and the mouth publicity where farmers to farmers and huge demand. So earlier they were also uh, producing uh, soybean seed, but last three years they are not producing soybean seed due to the crop failure, some of the losses. So one, one year they got a lot of huge loss also because the whole the whole the field due to the the climatic uh, uh, variability they faced uh, uh, the, the crop loss and not able to harvest even uh, even even two quintals from the per acre. So uh, the uh, and uh, and what what actually is now the comparison in the consumer started if they buy a seed from the seed cooperative is a much cheaper high quality on time and even if the marginal farmers and don't have money so if the fpo or sg can take guarantee of the when the crop will harvest they will return the money so they can give on the credit so three four these all mechanism is very well working uh, with this cooperative and i'm really very very happy to share this uh, experience uh, with you uh, all uh, friends yeah, so uh, if you see, key is important is to know your cost. What uh, the questions uh, uh, asked by uh, 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 our panelists? Key uh, when when our team uh, was facilitating this uh, seed producer company, so initially was a lot of hesitation in terms of how to we decide the price. And uh, we should compete with the market, and our we should make more profit, more return. So the lot of learning came. We uh, we uh, we uh, came on the conclusion is important to we see the our small and marginal farmers affordability to purchase seed quality seed, right? And uh, also a comparison is important because if because if the farmers the small and marginal farmers see the one very good packet. Packed, packed seed, the large, large farmers purchased from the shop. So sometimes once the crop not harvest and come to the home, the farmers little feel doubt. So initially we given a kind of uh, a comfort uh, to the consumers because our uh, our uh, uh, aim was to anyhow to initially from this our business demonstrate some successful consumer uh, stories. So which consumer stories, uh, uh, this, the, the farmers who use actually seed, these stories can be then uh, share across the other, uh, the farmers uh, by the nearby village. And even these story can share to the uh, local retailers who sell, uh, uh, seed from the uh, branded company. So the retailer also then started believe he, these, the cooperative what producing is a very good quality. So other, if I am uh, buying from some other producer group, other private company, so a lot of transporters and cost incurred. And these companies are ready to, uh, this producer company is ready to provide seeds on cheaper quality. So better to, I start selling, uh, with appreciating the local producers seed to the farmers. So friends, uh, one more case study I want to say, this is a very good uh, case study, which I, uh, this is coming from North Buster, is a North Buster uh, is a Chhattisgarh uh, region district, very Naxal, uh, Naxali affected district when I started working in uh, 2013 yeah, so, uh, yeah so yeah so the i, mean, I just 
want you to want about time. So it's already fifty five. So. Okay, okay, okay. So let me. Uh, so this is custard apple value chain study when we entered in village and seen the lot of exploitation uh, in a, on three sides. We seen uh, with the producer our NTFP collectors. One is uh, they were the, uh, using the practices for the harvesting the the fruit custard apple from the wild uh, plantation was not proper. And second thing was the whole the uh, the who will decide the price for the basket of the custard apple. This was not in uh, not in uh, the control of the our producer. This was in totally control of the person commission agent who was coming from the local uh, local agent, and he was deciding that uh, this basket uh, uh, will purchase in this much price. So we we uh, conducted a research, right? So it's very important uh, to a uh, lot of young uh, startup and entrepreneurs are listening to us. So you must invest some of your time in value chain assessment kind of report. So we put in good efforts in terms of collecting all the data from the six six thousand uh, uh, farmers and four four uh, covering four block uh, of Kankar district and uh, uh, the. The finding was the price realized by the women was seven rupees to eight rupees per kg uh, of custard apple, which uh, we as a so promoting as a social enterprise. First of all, we we uh, promoted three opportunities to intervene in value chain to support our producers. First is to direct sell. To the Raipur market, to large traders in APMCs. Second is, we promoted uh, pulping units, ice cream making units, the whole processing business. Third is, we promoted Buster Fish local shop outside uh, uh, the highway roads and some of the places where the uh, uh, customers come from. Is a possibility to can uh, the people who drive car can stop and can buy. So, and we announce uh, the price in, in masses to whole community. Ki our producer company and Asajji will not buy this custard apple from our tribal women less than fifteen rupees per kg. So, a lot of investment and all things happen which. Mr. Uh, Samir already told this how we need a kind of hybrid model, which can be partly supported from the grant and other uh, with the proper uh, investment plan, right? So uh, uh, you can. This is last slide. I, I'm closing here, right? So in case in return through institutional procure procurement. Uh, 810 rupees and increase in productivity 20 percent is 306 rupees and reduce in unsold wastage. So you see the I, I want to conclude here he, in a both way we are contributing to our community and environment in terms of economic benefit and other side on environmental benefit to how to conjure our forest or natural resources with promoting safe, Agriculture practices or NTFP practices. So this all actually what we see in a social enterprise business, we a promote a society where make well uh, make wealthy, resilient and responsible our producer and customer both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pramil. As uh, expected, interesting uh, ground uh, realities and live uh, examples of uh, you know uh, social entrepreneurship and social marketing in action. I think uh, we you know uh, we we have uh, we are running short of time, so we'll uh, keep our uh, questions uh, very limited. I, I just want to uh, ask a question uh, to maybe uh, Samir or uh, Pramil or Shomik any. Any of uh, you can uh, take it. Just want to understand that, uh, you know, uh, with respect to social entrepreneurship, 
with respect to social entrepreneurs the investments or expenses required to uh, undertake social marketing and the objectives or the outcomes sorry outcomes so how do we compare that let's say uh, social entrepreneurs they have a choice to uh, opt for social marketing versus traditional marketing so how those how these two choices visa vis the investments or expenses versus outcomes what should they choose should they i don't know if my question is uh, uh, clear but the question is that between traditional and uh, social marketing if it comes to cost benefit uh, analysis what works out well for social entrepreneurs so i want to clarify when a social entrepreneur uses marketing technologies he or she is doing social marketing so i don't see a dichotomy i think there's a false dichotomy to think of commercial versus social marketing um the concepts are the same the application is different so i don't think the question then i'm going to avoid your next question which is about the about the cost and benefit okay a well done marketing camp intervention is going to deliver you outcomes there is sufficient research now to back my statement yeah. to say that with confidence uh, maybe my gray hair gives me that false confidence but um that is the reality if we don't do marketing well the organization fails to deliver uh, to achieve its outcome so I, i'll stop here by saying do social marketing with its genuine concepts and it will deliver you results i uh, would totally agree with samir uh, it is the entire effort i mean uh, as against a commercial enterprise uh, it's just that the fact that uh, in the social impact space entrepreneurs are looking at uh, addressing a social need a gap uh, right by a product or a service and the rules of the game are just the same uh, as in a commercial enterprise right you can you can say let's say a hotel right uh, it's a service it also has a component of product hospitality uh, on the other hand uh, you look at healthcare and healthcare is i mean there are two aspects to it whether you say it's a for profit out and out corporate hospital even they are addressing a social good or a social need uh, or a gap in that in, in the uh, the entire system uh, a primary healthcare system or a primary healthcare solution promoted or started by a social or, or, or by an entrepreneur is also addressing a need uh, the rules of the game are the same uh, the effort the fundamentals need to be considered which need to be considered should be the same um, and the benchmark the yardsticks the measurement it's pretty much the same all of this needs to be uh, factored in when you do the uh pricing the entire campaign the strategies the roll out the operational efficiencies and therefore the cost benefit analysis right uh, obviously behavior change uh, one has to factor in that it will take its own genesis it's it's an organic process and it's a it's a long it, it's a process which happens over a significant period of time so that uh, having that considered uh you know um uh, you know one has to factor the so called cost benefit analysis i'll stop over here and i'll add to shomik's point which is first time behavior change is easier than to maintain that behavior over longer time and the marginal utility of benefit goes down but it has to be done if we have to really make a difference and move the needle on social change sorry pramil please jump in okay. Yeah. fine so here yeah, uh, this whole uh, the uh, i think the both things are very important is the first is to uh, analyze uh, the all the investment requirement and the outcome uh, what what is the expected outcome from the social enterprise business so uh, for for me is uh, is a 
the behavior change we see in lot of in rural areas context so all all lot of efforts from the entrepreneur side is when you target any like we 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 we, we are promoting the bio pesticide unit and which is largely is and and the input and bio pesticide promotion is very simple anybody can produce but the whole the the use and demand is dependent on the behavior of the consumer so and still is a, the all the bio pesticide entrepreneurs are struggling in terms of selling bio pesticide to the farmers those are very highly preferring to use the chemical one right so the expected outcome is for us to how to the conserve our environment how to the the serve the very nutritious and uh, uh, healthy food to our large consumer but the again the uh, the farmer side which i think is the whole uh, uh, the whole regenerating this whole agriculture thing with adopting right practices is required is a different kind of investment which is actually is a, as an entrepreneur we cannot calculate with uh, with um, I, i i don't think he, I, i'm 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 giving my uh, this thought out is very relevant to the current question of rahul but is important is in my context when i promote social enterprise uh, related to the agriculture and with the farmers to take care of the environmental and all the social issues is a very very challenging okay so uh, one more question before uh, we take uh, questions from the uh, audience uh, can we uh, 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 samir you must have uh, you know because you have been associated with this uh, you know and you have done lot of research can uh, you give us one example of a very successful social marketing campaign and one example where social marketing uh, campaign has all gone wrong and it has not uh, you know yielded the desired results or you know the opposite results i don't know if you if you guarantee that i can come back to india when i want to <laughs> we'll find I'll out be, I, I, i'll be honest and uh, yeah. people can criticize me for this but yeah. the nirodh campaign has not worked hmm. uh, which is the largest family planning effort in the world uh, and there are reasons for it and i'll be blunt one of the reasons is i mean the obvious reason is it was a very top down approach uh, the government um, till 1993 94 uh was doing it all by itself and was really shoving it down our throat uh by some really lackluster interventions uh we all grew up with those campaigns uh do bachcho ke beech do paudho ke peech teen foot ki duri honi chahiye i mean i yeah yeah, yeah. before samachar i was exposed to that campaign every day maybe it worked on me i have two children now no more than that um and there was a gap of teen foot ki duri um so maybe it worked but Uh, the campaign was not talking to me the campaign was not relevant to me so they didn't do their homework they didn't understand my world they didn't understand the consumers world uh, so they didn't they lacked on research it was more on sales their their outcome metric is how many condoms were distributed hmm. in social marketing it's about behavioral change i need to know how many condoms were used used yeah again the metric is wrong and here's the here's where the rubber hits the road there was corruption in the entire initiative many times condoms are rotting in the warehouses and not reaching the pharmacies or the actual campaign areas however i will now end on a positive note after 92 93 government of india realized its follies and thanks to them and i appreciate that uh, could be the ministry could be whatever the pressure from outside agencies but they realized we can't do this it's not our role so then they privatized the role to companies like dkts Uh, population services international yeah. uh, uh parivar seva sansha in uh, and then there is hls ppt which is the largest smo social marketing organization in india they are far more professional they are far more audience oriented they are social entrepreneurial so they have really pushed the agenda further with very strong and aggressive and grounded initiatives so i'm giving you i'm answering your question within the same 1968 to 2021 initiative but the first half was problematic and the second half has been far more professional effective and actually has delivered dividends to india's population and hiv aids um, agenda okay 
Okay, uh, Pramil Shomik, do you have any example to share? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Vijender is nudging me that the time is over. We should open up. Uh, so, uh, Vijender, uh, the floor is all yours. Uh, you you know, we can take up uh, participants' questions. How many questions we can take? How much time do we have? Now? We have only two questions and like, yeah. Okay. So, so, this question is for Samindesh Pandey again and uh, Ravi, it's from Ravi Patel. So, uh, very lengthy question, but like, <laughs> I like to keep it short. Uh, so he he is actually uh, working on a product which uh, basically helps smokers. Sure, light jacket. Hello. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, he is developing a product which basically helps uh, smokers to quit. And like, is it a good way? I mean, like, is it advisable to go with social marketing, or like, how how this can help? So that's his question. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ravi. Yes, I saw that question. So basically, every time you have a product or a service to promote, you have you are doing social marketing. Now, of course, just having a product and service is not sufficient. You also have to be audience oriented. You have to understand them through research and co-create and co-design work. So that is important. But the fact that you actually have a herbal cigarette, that you are taking the right step in terms of doing social marketing. Um, now you also the issue uh, raise the issue of unintended consequences that it actually creates carbon monoxide. Um, I'm not a scientist. I don't know enough about that. Uh, if if it is, you have to uh, consider the the benefit and cost about this. If the carbon monoxide actually is going to hurt the smoker, then obviously it's not giving the same results as you intend them to do. So that's something uh, R and D that you have to do in the background. I cannot help you with that particular aspect. Um, all I will mention is you have an herbal cigarette, you're good to go, do social marketing, be aggressively audience oriented, understand them, work with them right from the start, and they will have the solutions inbuilt. They just have to tell you those solutions, take those and run with it, and you will succeed. I'll just add that, uh, especially with re regards to de-addiction, smoking de-addiction. De de uh, I mean, Government of India runs a very large uh, anti-tobacco campaign, right? Uh, and I think uh, what Samir touched upon at the beginning of his presentation, you know, it's uh, <laughs> the Ministry of Health has a specific division called an anti-tobacco division in Nirman Bhavan, which it's all about scaring people. It's all about, uh, you know, sort of, uh, for lack of a better terminology, threatening people with dire consequences. And that's the messaging. Uh, I think my, to my, uh, I would suggest to change it to a positive message. Uh, when you want to communicate to your, uh, consumers uh, and and consumers and obviously then you do you know what kind of who all uh, do smoking or who all are using tobacco uh, per se right and various forms of tobacco one smoking is one aspect of it so you know women uh, you will have to possibly target your communication in a specific manner uh, for men young adults uh, it will have to be in a certain manner but my personal opinion is uh structure it or orient it in a positive message with a positive message i think that to me uh, would sort of um, nudge the user uh incrementally but it will be a sort of an everlasting sort of a uh, message i mean just just take for example amul uh, i mean they come out with the best i mean i in that that amount of copy, uh, hardly, you know, possibly five or six or ten, 10 words, the messaging is so powerful uh, every time. Uh, and, and the recall is so great, uh, although it's not social, I mean, social marketing, but the messaging is always, you know, sort of uh, giving it a positive spin to the rig, you know, whatever is happening around the world. So uh, my response to your question is, uh, you know, make it positive rather than you know, trying to scare the living daylights out of people. Yeah. 
Thank you. So before uh, I, I put one more question in front of you, I, I just want our participants to give me a, a poll we have actually launched. So please do answer. So uh, by then, I mean, like, uh, there is a poll you uh, shared with you all. Please do answer. Uh, we wonder where we wanted to understand how. Like we have used multiple ways to reach out, and we have uh, I mean, like huge progressions. Like uh, we want to understand which which way is like more effective. Something which we are figuring out. And uh, of course, like uh, uh, there is a, a one more question for uh, Samir sir. Again, I mean, like uh, I was. This is from Sonia Lal, and uh, I, I I have a quick answer for this, but like he's asking for more. I mean, like more examples. What kind of tools? Uh, so we do have a we we are going to have a very typical training which is specifically focused on social marketing in the later stage, which you will come across. But like so, uh, sir, uh, she's asking about like uh, the regular tools. I mean, like street plays and storytelling. Other than this, what what are the other tools? And like uh, in comparative in comparison to the social media existing internet penetration and all. So, what are the other tools that can be used in social media? That's what she wanted. Yeah. So the research shows that I mean, if you draw a spectrum from mass media talking to thousands and millions of people on one hand, like television, like Doodarshan, like uh, whatever the cable television, and then go to the other end where you have one-on-one -on -one communication happening with uh, people that you know personally. So if you draw all media options on that spectrum, what research shows is this end of the spectrum. When you talk one-on-one -on -one to people you know and you trust, that effect is the best, right? So now social media in that sense can allow you to have communication or contact with your audience and a person whom they trust and like on a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one basis. And again, it may not be one-on-one -on -one like a counseling approach, but one-on-one -on -one as in I can at least talk, to, I can get a feel, a sense that I'm actually talking to this person individually. That aspect. So now you think of which media options fit that role. Yeah, think about that definition and then you will come up with your own ideas of how can I ensure that I reach my audience member whom they trust in a way they like and they trust um, and, and they can have some kind of conversation uh, and again social media in that sense is very useful. Street play is useful but the problem with street play is it allows you one-on-one -on -one, but the person the audience member may not trust or like the street play um, creators. So there could be pluses and minuses in each media option, but that the one that I gave you, that option is the golden standard of effect of a medium. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. I mean, like, I guess like that has solved all. So uh, if I have a <laughs> advantage, like being a person, so I, I want to put one question to all the panelists here uh, regarding, it's a mixed question for social marketing and sales. So, yeah, I mean, like, uh, still, we, we have so many social enterprises and, like, uh, social enterprise definition itself is, like, very flexible or, like, very dilute or vague. And uh, why this entire focus is not happening? Uh, social marketing has been not used by every social enterprise or, like, of course, social enterprise definitely works for, works for the behavioral team. So, why this inefficient or, like, that effectiveness is not drawn from social marketing and like is this something related to the expenses part i, I want uh, some of the stomach sir and pramit sir input on that so why we could not use social marketing as a tool effectively and then is there sales part which is connected to this and like social marketing as not an effective part for putting in our sales part yes i'm clear in my question Shomik and Pramil can answer that because it's connecting to sales. No, so I, uh, uh, Vijender, I mean, help me. I, I just couldn't get it. I mean, what you, uh, so uh, if so I. There, is a, there are social enterprises uh, who are not using uh, social marketing as a tool to improve their sales. So why this is happening? Is it simple awareness or like, is it something relevant to more expenses on sales or marketing part? 
Uh, well, to my mind, I think it depends on uh, you know a lot of uh, it's it's not a very sort of a you know it's not a very simple sort of a uh, answer, right? There's no simple answer. It all depends on uh, you know what are you trying to uh, what's your solution. Uh, I mean, for that, I mean, I'll just give you an example. Since I'm from the healthcare background, if it's a you know device based uh, you know solution, uh, which is a med tech device. I mean, do you really need to ma uh, market per se? Uh, you don't, right? But on the other hand, uh, the examples with which Pramil said, or for that matter, Samir said, you do need marketing, right? And why they're not using it could be, you know, uh, you know, reasons as diverse as not having uh, enough funding for that matter, or not having that runway. So they do, or they'd like to do it, but they, from a sustainability perspective. It just doesn't make sense, right? Uh, of course, uh, in 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 you know some of the ways to address it is try and look for certain grants, etc., which could help you, uh, you know, uh, look at uh, you know creating that behavior or, or 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 you know creating impact by doing behavior change uh, for a project on behavior change in a community. Uh, you know, in several communities and use that grant funding to create a campaign, to create that messaging, to create, uh, you know, the entire sort of value proposition of creating this sort of media, uh, sorry, marketing, uh, you know, strategy, which then will then play out into your sales. But, you know, I mean, for me, it's, it's not a very simple answer. Yes. yes. I hope I've answered uh, to some extent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Uh, for me, is a very important is partnership because we know uh, that this social enterprise is required a lot of investment to change behavior or create demand a particular product in a consumer in very highly uh, com com competitive environment where you are so social inter entrepreneur enterprise, so you are taking care of a lot of things which is very important for planet or for the consumers. But the other, you are competing to people, they are very flexible to make uh, profit returns. So what can, what, uh, how can we protect uh, our business or how can we build or scale our business? The most important thing is the partnership. So we should identify all the enablers, all the possible part stakeholders who can contribute us, I think, or who can win-win uh, situation for both uh, enabler and partner for uh, uh, for uh, your idea or the other idea whom we can, you can complement with the, your social enterprise. What uh, uh, this is uh, as important area, what I see to uh, work. And other thing is to, uh, we simply, uh, uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, guide when our young graduates and all uh, come and they want to work in field as an entrepreneur. We ask, you simply ask the farmer ko kya what farmer want, actually, what consumer want, right? And where is the problem? Ho where are we facing problems in availing the particular item or particular uh, the service uh, or uh, finance, whichever? How can he pitch, right? And who are current, uh, the possible, uh, the partners, right? So my, my way of working are we uh, with the, because I'm coming from NGO sector, right? So I know the, my lot of work is uh, from uh, the supported from the lot of philanthropic and donors. And then we only able to establish this thing, but we want to move out from this all and uh, independent as uh, Mr. Samir shows uh, the presentation, how the, is uh, the company actually in a, in, in a different country is a self-sustainable and Mumbai like 56%. So in a similar manner, we are also thinking to how to, from this all cap of uh, non-government organization with the largely dependent funding side, we should uh, 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 create the community farmers institution. The farmers institutions can take care of our cost, right? So, uh, but this all is, is uh, in words is easy to tell, but very difficult at the ground level. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. I mean, like you have got different element partners and 
Yeah, thank you, sir. Sir, Samir, sir, do you want to add anything to this? Um, I think the answers went in very different directions. So what was the original question? Or do you to, want to modify the question? To, to, to keep it simple, like why social enterprises in current scenario are not using social marketing as an effective tool rather than they are doing away with the regular marketing tools? So first of all, I think they do marketing, but they do it badly. Um, the I think Rahul's very first point. Uh, was uh, social marketing is not social media. There is an assumption, an assumption, uh, and it comes as a shocker to many of my colleagues when I tell them, is advertising changes behaviors. And so all I need to do is print a brochure, uh, printer ko paisa de do, brochure chape ga ho, usko baato, and people will read because they are rational human beings, as you know, and then they will think for themselves and then they will change their behavior. In, as we know, in reality, behavior change is far more complicated. Uh, I tried to explain some of those attributes in my presentation. So I think I think social entrepreneurs do social marketing, but very badly. Uh, they land up using only social media or communication strategies. And again, many times, as Shomik highlighted, they are threatening or fear-based, avoidance-based. Fear does not change behavior. Communication alone does not change behavior. Uh, maybe 20... And I, there's a different uh, kind of uh, ideas that I can uh, elaborate later on, but uh, when you are really motivated to change behavior and you are able to do so, all that is lacking is awareness. In that scenario, communication only strategies will work, but that represents no more than 10 to 20% of our society, uh, which is why communication alone strategies fail and marketing gets underutilized. So I think it's a fallacy about what marketing stands for that results in our our feeling, our perception that marketing is not being used. Yep. Thank you, sir. Uh, I guess like uh, we have already crossed five minutes, seven minutes to the fixed time. So th thank you, thank you, dear participants, and thank you all. Um, just uh, before uh, closing, I, I just want to uh, mention a few things. So there are a few more questions from our people, I mean, like participants. So please write back to us. We'll, we'll connect you with the panel panelist. And, uh, we'll, we'll try to uh, answer back your questions the way you have. And I, I have intentionally, I mean, like there were a few relevant things. So you, you can elaborate those questions and write to us so that we, we connect you. To and uh, here, like uh, you, you already see, we have uh, one more session on next week. Like we, it's a web, web series we have planned. So we have, uh, eight panel discussions. So the next uh, next panel discussion we have is uh, leadership in tech, team management. So why social enterprises fail leadership and the criticality of team management. So we have beautiful, again, very strong uh, panelists here. And also we, we have, uh, I, I just want to talk about, like, we, we also have planned further more uh, detail. I mean, like this is the one to our three hour sessions, we are uh, conducting panel discussions and knowledge, knowledge sharing sessions. So we have these trainings coming up and like uh, you, you can explore more and uh, register with us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. One and all. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Panelists. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, very Thank you much for having us. For organizing us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Samir. Thank you, Shamik. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.